Hey y'all, this lesson is just a quick lesson on X and Y intercepts. Uh, before we get into X and Y intercepts, I wanna first kind of review you on uh, plotting points and the coordinate plane. So a point is written usually, not always, X comma Y. It might be A and B or C and D or whatever, but typically speaking, we use X and Y. And X always goes first when you're writing a point. So a point is plotted on a coordinate plane. And a coordinate plane has coincidentally an X axis and a Y axis. And these axes meet at the origin, which is zero, zero, that's the middle. So it's kind of your beginning, your starting point. i make this a little bit smaller. There we go. So I have a little picture here. I think it's a teddy bear. And, and we're gonna take a minute to label our points. So for point A, that is up here. We would start in the origin or at the origin, we would walk over to and we would climb up one, two, three, four, five. So that point is two comma five, X comma Y. This is my X axis and this is my Y axis with the origin in the middle. And then you would just do that for every point. So B, we would go over four, up four. C, we would go over three, up two. D over three down one, so that's gonna be a negative one. <clears throat> e, we would go over one down three. F left one down three, so those are both negative. And then I want you to pause the video and try the rest on your own. And when you've done it on your own, hit play and see if you got them right. Hopefully you got these answers for your remaining points. So go ahead and check those, see if you got the same thing. If you didn't, just double check yours. Or if you think one of mine is wrong, then email me and let me know. <laughs> I do make mistakes. So that's how you plot points. That's how you read or label points. It always goes X comma Y not too bad. So that was just a quick review, which will take us to the point of the lesson, which is X and Y intercepts. An X intercept is where a function crosses the X axis, which kind of makes sense. The Y intercept is where the function crosses the, would you guess it? Y axis. So plot a point on the y-axis and the x-axis and label your points. You can pick any point you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, the points you pick might be different from the points I pick, and that's good because I'm going to show you why it doesn't matter. All right, so I'm going to pick a point. I like threes, so I'm going to do those. I just picked randomly. And then I'm going to label my points. So this point is over zero up three, and this point is over six up zero. So your points might be different, that's fine. Just make sure you label them correctly based on the ones that you picked. This is a y-intercept, and this is an x, I guess a x-intercept, because it is on the x-axis. And the y-intercept is on the y-axis. Now, depending on the point you picked, your y-value might be different than mine. But one thing remains the same. We all have zero for the x-value because we didn't go left or right any. We stayed on the axis. So this would be 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, 0, 6. You get the point. And then for the x-intercept, since it's on the x-axis, it has no height. 
So your X value might be different depending on the point you picked, but your Y value should be zero because you can go over one up zero, over two up zero, over three up zero, over four up zero, and so on, no matter what you picked, even if it's negative. Because it doesn't go up or down, it doesn't have that rise or fall, which makes it zero. But we're gonna use that key fact to help us find X and Y intercepts when maybe you aren't given a graph. So an X intercept to summarize has a zero for the Y value and the Y intercept has a zero for the X value. If we're given an equation, we can use that knowledge to help us find an X and Y intercept without graphing. Sometimes it's kind of a pain to draw a graph or solve for Y to draw the graph or whatever. So you can use this in its general form to and our summary up here to find the X and Y intercept. So we know that for an x-intercept, I'm going to abbreviate here, that y is 0 because it has no height, which means that I can substitute 0 in place of y to this equation. And anything times 0 is just 0. So I don't really need to write that and I'm left with 3x equals 12. And then when you solve, you divide by three to get four. So now we have an x value and we know the y value is zero, which gives us our point. Our point is four comma zero. Yay! And then we can do the same process with the y-intercept. We know x has to equal zero, so we can sub that in. Anything times zero is zero. So we're left with this. We solve for y and we get negative three. And now we have an x coordinate and a y coordinate and we can write our point as x comma y. Dun dun dun. And then at this point, you can actually graph it pretty easily. If we just sketched a graph, I'll do it over here. Then I would go zero, negative three, and four, zero, and then draw my line. And that's a graph of the line. So if you were given an equation like this and you were asked to graph it, then you could graph it by finding the two points, the two, two of the points. There's an infinite amount of points on a line, but those are two of them. And you really only need two to graph a line. You either need the slope and an intercept, the slope and a point, two points, intercepts, anything like that, where you have two pieces of information, you can graph a line. And then if we go into something that's nonlinear, we can still state X and Y intercepts. Now, if it's nonlinear, there might be more than one X intercept. There might be three or four or five. So in this case, I want you to take a look at the graph below and pause the video to state the X intercepts and the Y intercepts. It might be one, but anyway, I don't wanna spoil it for you. <laughs> go ahead and state them as points, write them as points, and then come back and check your answer. So we can see that the graph crosses the x-axis here and here, which means I have two x-intercepts. I'm going to abbreviate. We have one at negative 4, 0, and one at 2, 0. And then we only have one y-intercept, and that is here we go over zero down three. And that I believe is all it wanted. Yeah, that's all it wanted. So that's it, that's your answer. Now, if we have reverse engineered that, if you had been given this information only, then you could graph that information and end up with this picture. Isn't that wonderful? So later on in the semester, we will 
have this information and we will be expected to graph. So you'll definitely be seeing this again. That's all I have for this video. Um, stay tuned for your next lesson and um, I hope this helped. If you have any questions or need any further help, please let me know and I will be happy to be there for you.